Hi, welcome back to Golden Rule Radio this week. We're sitting at 1287 as we record. That's the spot price of gold. Miles is going to explain to all of you why that's the case. Tori, the last couple of weeks, especially in gold, has been pretty exciting, although platinum's been pretty exciting too, so I can't wait to get to that chart. Uh, but gold coming into that declining trend line that we've been talking about for a number of months, good to see us come back up and touch that. This has been a multi-year compressing pennant that we're building as we're stepping off that first stage of what I think is going to be a long-term bull market as the equity market continues to show those cracks like we saw last fall. So what we did is when you look back to the high-end movement, last time we came up into it, we had that sideways channel back uh, summer of last year before we the bears took, took over and, and pushed the price back down to the bottom end of the channel. So we came into the right end of that shoulder. Uh, just touched into it at around 1246 and of course we saw a nice little drop here uh, we also had a three drives up which you know how I love the three drives pattern I talk about them all the time so we did have a three drives up with some divergence on the daily chart but interestingly we did not have divergence on the four hour which personally I think is a more powerful chart there are some arguments that the institutional traders and the commercial traders like the slightly shorter interday charts like the four hour candles uh, so without seeing that RSI rollover in the four hour, I'm kind of at this weird 50-50 point right now with the price coming back down to this previous price level action I've got circled on the chart here. Uh, so we're looking at the 382 fib of the last move up. We did not have institutional divergence against RSI. We did have an overbuy but we didn't really have any type of major institutional divergence and we've come down to a pretty strong fib level so half of me thinks we're gonna now see another push up and not just hit the bottom end of that right shoulder of the last move but let's see maybe have a three drives pattern up to that 1350 maybe for our second point and then finally that third drive up and hit that 1365 1370 number uh, then we get to decide if we're actually breaking into new territory for the first time in five years. So this is really exciting for me because I love watching these multi-year charts start to come together. And when you get to these outlier prices on either side, you start to really see that fist fight between the bulls and the bears take place. So I'm excited to see how this plays out. On the other side, I think, Robert, you were mentioning this earlier. What's our downside potential look like? I said I'm 50-50 on where we go over the next week. So what if we're going down? Yeah, I, I'd be about 50, 52 miles. Um, which time frame is in control? Is it the daily chart or is it the four hour institutional money? We will see which is in control. Um, and that's a good point about the four hour chart not showing divergence because on the daily chart, I mean, when we pointed out divergence in the last few weeks, that downward movement in the price has been realized. This is the the pullback we've been talking about. So sitting here around 1280, 85, I could make a pretty strong case that this would turn here and go higher. Um, I can also say you you could pull back on what you're asking me is, do we go lower? And if we do, where do we go? I think you you come back down to the, the next FIB level, um, which would be around 1240, 1250 range. Um, you know, that that's kind of where we broke out and, and rose with gold up. So we will see. But we've seen this pullback that we've been waiting for into the, the high 1200s. Does it give us a little bit more to the downside? I hope so. Um, but once we move back above 1300, we're headed higher. You're not going to see $1,200 gold again or anywhere near it. It's just like what we've been doing for the last three, three and a half years, stair stepping higher. This is that step backwards. Is the step going to come down a little bit more? We'll see. If we do see this step backwards a little bit farther, take advantage of it. Well, I'm going to put you both on the spot here. I mean, as a brokerage firm, we make a two-way market. So we're buying and we're selling, you know, from the client to the client. And since you're both 50-50, what's the strategy here for the investor looking to either add or reduce ounces in the short term? All right. Are you are you looking at a cost average in or out here? Are you saying, you know, you, you guys have said on this show, 1285 is a, is a great target point. Why would we not be recommending to the investor that you add a little bit here and you add a little bit more at 1245? Does that sound right? I wouldn't wait. 
I, I wouldn't wait on 1240, 1250 because it could be such a, a quick move down to there to complete some of the, the orders that might be pending that you may not even have the opportunity to do that at those numbers. So I wouldn't wait. Um, I think that we're headed higher no matter what. So buying a 1285 is a done deal in my mind. Okay. When will you know, though, that we are clearly going to break out to the upside? What's going to be that figure to where you don't let it get away from them on a cost averaging in basis? Yeah, I would set a parameter. If you are thinking, okay, maybe I do take the the chance of it going lower, which it easily could. So uh, moving past that, it, you easily could. Um, you could you could see it in the mid 1200s. So setting a parameter to say, okay, if we do get the drop, I'm loading up. If we don't, then set the parameter back above probably the 1300 psychological, but really probably 1305 miles. That's kind of where we saw the resistance before we moved down from 1305 down to where we are at 1285. That's what I would do is I'd set a high end. If it breaks out above that, I'm in, I'm getting in. If we see the drop, obviously, but I don't think you're going to hurt yourself buying today at 1285. Well, and in the short term, and I know we do a weekly show, so we have to talk about the short term, but realistically, I'm buying gold till we're at 1400. Right. No, I am too. But the reality of it is we manage portfolios. We've got IRA accounts, for example. Some people are taking distributions at this time of right. year. Some are making contributions. And the extra 20 bucks an ounce, we obviously don't want to deny the fact that that adds up. Right. If you're talking 10 or 20 or 50 or 100 ounces of gold, 20, 30 bucks an ounce does make a big difference. That's an extra ounce of gold. Right. And we get asked frequently why why the technical focus. Well, that's, that's a good reason why right there is we are looking for the opportunity to maximize your ins and your outs out of your portfolio position. Yeah. And looking at the alternative market to gold, you've got the dollar and the dollar's had a good rise. <clears throat> so you've had a good, a good movement up there. And what do we have? We have a president who wants a weaker dollar. So, you know, add on to him wanting a weaker dollar, you've got the rest of the world that's been making mo- motions to get away from having to use the dollar. Even the Europeans, our supposed friends, are doing that. So you've got this this prime opportunity. It's ripe for the picking. Well, and that's why we focus a lot on ratios. Look at what silver's done here in this period of time as gold's dropped. Silver has dropped disproportionately. Uh, that ratio is back up to 85 to 1. Uh, do you want to run us through the silver chart before we, we move out of the white metals? So silver coming into kind of that low end floor uh, that we had throughout 2018, little three drives pattern up, touches it, and obviously has had a nice sell off since then. So silver, as always, kind of does the same thing gold does a little bit behind gold and much more volatile. You know, the metal moves more aggressively, uh, but ultimately you see very similar patterns uh, in a lot of cases. And that's certainly what we're seeing here in silver. So 1505 at the time of this recording, after having been, you know, what, 1650 here recently, pretty nice drop in silver, pushing that ratio back up to around 85. Uh, When the swing happens, and I think the swing happens when we see those 1375, 1400 numbers on gold. Gold gets the immediate attention. The average person looks at the chart, says, holy smokes, where have I been? It's up 400 bucks over the last two and a half, three years. I can't afford it. I'm going with silver. And we saw that happen during the last crash. You know, gold from 700 to 2000, silver from 10 to 50. Exponentially, much larger position. And that's why we always talk about these ratios. Where's the benefit? Where's the value? Yeah, you know, so you mentioned earlier in the program you're excited to talk about platinum. Why don't you take us there and and what's got you so enthusiastic? Is it the fact that it's sticking above that 800 figure, and are we in a new channel? I liked how it just kind of followed the the baseline trend along the bottom, and then just had a, a sweet rally, you know, off of that high 700s, low 800s number, and just went up 60 something bucks very quickly. Yeah, very quickly up to those old November highs from last year and then has obviously come back down to that rising channel uh, sitting just below it now. So platinum, it's just nice to see it do something. I mean, palladium (laughs) has gotten so much attention, done so exceptionally well up at 1500. And we have for a year now been talking about how that's going to turn around at some point or at least should historically always has. Yeah. So it's perfectly reasonable to expect that it will again. So It will. That's a potential energy, right? You know, same thing, the palladium, the potential to turn down is going to be pretty strong. We're at 1542 today and it's up over 240, $245 just in 2019. So we're all looking from the outside in as well and just wondering when does it top out? 
finally, the Dow. The Dow has exceeded all valuable fibs worth looking at. So really, we're just looking at some price action levels, kind of the low end of the previous high, which we came up and tested again end of last year before the big crash. So not surprising to see the Dow turn down over the last week. Uh, we'll certainly keep an eye on that and see where we think some of its uh, resting points may be uh, over the next month. All right. So jumping in real fast, a lot of talk coming out of the Federal Reserve, you know, central banks around the world. Obviously, we've talked about them accumulating ounces, but a lot of action here that actually ends up impacting the markets also. Boston Fed President Rosengren said that another rate hike is possible. So not all rate hikes are completely off the table for a year. They're going to wait and see uh, what the economy is doing. So well, they the don't expect it. Yeah, the stock market action provides them that cover a little bit to, to hike rates again. So it, it absolutely. And, and we yeah. know they need to, right? Yeah, because he even do. said in this announcement that, that low rates give the Fed less room to act. They know they need room to act, even though they don't see a recession in the very near term, according to Rosengren. That's something that they, they need that room to act so that they can lower rates in the future. And the irony here is that corporate and U.S. debt has skyrocketed. So they're afraid to raise rates in an environment where there's so much debt. Okay, that makes sense. But why is there so much debt? Because they lowered rates and they made borrowing so easy. So they wonder why corporate debt is sky high, right? U.S. credit card debt, it closed 2018 at a record $870 billion, right? right People like are the, borrowing like the crazy. The Fed's own personal like chicken and egg problem, right? Like it's its own it self-fulfilling prophecy. It absolutely is. So then you've got Dallas Fed President Kaplan voicing concerns over what? U.S. debt levels. Okay, well... Of course. So that corporate debt actually amplifies slowdown. So they're they're concerned about too much corporate debt because that can create an economic slowdown, right? That obviously would stimulate gold uh, moving up. But it's also a reason for the rate hike pause, and we don't know how long that's going to last. Moderating future debt can also create a headwind for the economy. So if you're talking about these signs and what are they seeing that they're nervous about the economy over? All right, that is the future debt, the current debt. More U.S. debt means less capacity for investment. And higher debt means the U.S. economy and the Fed are more interest rate sensitive. So they really get stuck in this game of manipulating interest rates, trying to drive credit expansion, trying to rein in debt at the same time. And I don't know what direction they head, but it's going to be purely reactionary in the months and years to come. And you know, with a substantial increase in the present value of unfunded entitlements, which Kaplan also talks about, is it being very, very dangerous. The value of unfunded entitlements is just out of control. So so enough about the Federal Reserve and central banks. You know, again, all eyes on debt. Bill King loves to say debt does not matter until it matters. Uh, at some point, it will matter, like in a recession or in times of crisis. And those recessions can be good. Recessions, you guys, remedy debt abuses and we need a recession greatly well it's the servicing of the debt that starts to put you into bankruptcy it's not hey i took out a bunch of debt it's when actually paying it and making the payments on it becomes a problem and that's i think where we are we're getting to that point absolutely well you know the u.s budget gap widened in the first four months of the fiscal year so the federal government's fiscal year started in october so now you're four months in and that budget gap widened, right? That's because tax collections fell and federal spending rose. And on top of that, what they don't talk about is part of that is the debt service. Less money coming in, more going out. How does that work for your household budget? That's it for Golden Rule Radio this week. We thank you for tuning in. As always, if you like what you heard, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, head on over to our website, McIlvaney.com. Facebook, McIlvaney Financial, Twitter, at ICA Gold, or give us a call anytime at 800-525-9556. Thanks for listening. Have a great week. Music.